Hi, it's Katrina. From ruins of a city where everyone disappeared to finding bombs still ready to explode, here are nine unsettling discoveries. Number 9. Ruins of Gedi Located along Kenya's north coast in East Africa, in a lush forest next to the Indian Ocean are the ruins of Gedi, a walled Swahili town that was originally built in the 12th century, before being rebuilt during the 15th and 16th centuries. Gedi peaked during the 1400s, as evidenced by the stone and coral brick ruins of mosques, a palace, and homes dating back to the time. Experts believe the town was an important trade center based on historical records and its coastal location. But Getty's glory was short-lived, and by the mid-17th century, its inhabitants mysteriously abandoned the town. There is no definite established cause for why residents fled Getty. Researchers cite numerous possible factors, including a series of raids among coastal settlements by Congo tribes in 1589, known as the Wazimba Raids. The Portuguese presence in Africa starting in the 16th century, the Gala, a hostile nomadic Somali tribe, and perhaps a falling water table reflected by the deepening of the town's well. For one reason or another, Getty's occupants saw good reason to abruptly pack up and leave. Number 8. Codex Higas Nicknamed the Devil's Bible, the Codex Higas is the world's largest existing medieval manuscript, measuring 36 inches, or 3 feet long. Thought to be handwritten during the 13th century by a single anonymous monk, the mysterious book was originally stored in a Benedictine monastery in modern-day Czech Republic. Contained within the manuscript are the New and Old Testaments, as well as numerous other short texts about relevant matters of the time, including calendars, exorcisms, grammar, and medical topics. The Codex Higas baffles experts from various angles. For one, it would have been a massive undertaking for just one person to create the entire manuscript, putting it mildly. As the National Library of Sweden explains, if the scribe worked for six hours a day and wrote six days a week, this means that the manuscript could have taken about five years to complete. If the scribe was a monk, he may have only been able to work for about three hours a day, and this means that the manuscript would have taken ten years to write. Although, what else are monks doing? Additionally, the Codex Higas contains disturbing artwork, hence its nickname as the Devil's Bible, including at least one full-color rendering of the devil occupying an entire page. Experts can only speculate about how such dark imagery made its way into what would otherwise be considered a sacred text. The manuscript remains in Sweden after originally being transported there during the late 16th century as an object plundered from the Holy Roman Emperor's castle during the Thirty Years' War. It is currently on display at the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm. Number 7. Ubaid Lizardmen The Sumerians are commonly considered among the earliest civilizations, but evidence of even more ancient societies has been found, including in southern Iraq, where archaeologists uncovered pre-Sumerian artifacts dating back some 7,000 years. Included among the finds are statues depicting humanoid creatures with lizard-like attributes. Unlike any other artifacts ever found, the Ubaid lizardmen, as the objects are called, come from the prehistoric Ubaidian culture of Mesopotamia, which dates back between 5,500 and 4,000 BC. The society's origins, much like those of the Sumerians, are unknown. They lived in mud brick houses in large village settlements and had developed agriculture, including the use of irrigation. Most of the bizarre reptilian slash human figurines were found at the main archaeological site of Tel al Ubaid, although others were found nearby at Ur and Eridu. The male and female sculptures, which are situated in different postures and most of which appear to wear helmets and some type of shoulder padding, were excavated beginning in 1919. Some of them are holding staffs or scepters, and several of the female figurines are holding lizard like babies who are suckling milk. It's unknown what the figurines represent, but they appear to be very important to the Abidian culture. Number 6. Unknown Woman of the Seine During the late 1880s, an unidentified young woman's body was pulled from the River Seine in Paris. She came to be known as the Unknown Woman of the Seine, and is also occasionally called La Belle Italienne. There were no signs of violence evident on the anonymous woman's body, so officials concluded that she must have taken her own life. They never learned her true identity and could only speculate about her age, which they put at around 16 years old. The woman, or the girl's face, was compelling enough for a pathologist at the Paris the Morgue to create a death mask made out of plaster, and this strange memento, which bears an eerily pleasant smile that some have compared to that of the Mona Lisa, 
subsequently became a popular subject of artwork hanging in early 20th century households. It's even said that CPR dummies bear the woman's image. As iconic as she became post-mortem, however, nobody ever figured out who she was or anything telling about her life, and the story about the death mask being sourced from a woman who drowned in the Seine remains a mystery. Number 5. Isleworth Mona Lisa We've all heard of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. It's one of the most famous portraits of all time. But you probably didn't know that there's another painting depicting the same female subject with the same enigmatic half-smile, which many people also attribute to the work of Leonardo da Vinci, although the identity of the painting's creator is admittedly unproven. Da Vinci only painted around 20 works completely on his own throughout his career, and scholars generally agree that 15 survive. But as things currently stand, the Isleworth Mona Lisa, as the painting in question is called, is not officially considered one of them. The artwork's current owners believe da Vinci created the work about a decade before painting the famed and proven authentic Mona Lisa. Experts and enthusiasts disagree strongly about whether or not the Isleworth Mona Lisa is a genuine da Vinci painting. Some believe that it came from one of his workshops, where the painter incorporated certain elements into the work, but had other painters work on and finish it. Others, including the Swiss nonprofit Mona Lisa organization, lean toward the belief that the painting is 100% authentic. On the other hand, some people are convinced to the contrary, including Martin Kemp, a da Vinci expert and professor emeritus of art history at the University of Oxford, who is sure that the Isleworth Mona Lisa is a fake. Number 4. Chinese Pre-Columbian Petroglyphs in the USA Who reached North America first, after the Native Americans, has long been a topic of debate among scholars. One controversial theory, which has gained very little support, but is backed by a few experts in their own right, posits that the Chinese reached the New World before Columbus, before the Vikings and other Europeans. The theory was developed by a retired public high school teacher from Chicago named John A. Ruskamp Jr., who asserted in an independently published 2013 research paper that some petroglyphs found on pre-Columbian North American rock writing in Nine Mile Canyon, Utah, are actually Chinese characters. It's a bold claim, especially in an academic community that strongly leans towards Europeans being the first people to arrive in the New World, after Native Americans. And if there's any truth to it, it would turn the scientific world's understanding of migration history on its head, and would fly in the face of virtually everything we know about how and when people arrived on the continent. But some scholars thought it was absolutely outrageous to think that the Vikings could have reached North America before Columbus did, and as it turned out, they were proven flat out wrong when evidence of pre-Columbian Viking settlements was discovered in Newfoundland, Canada. Today, the once laughable notion that the Vikings beat Columbus to the New World is a pretty commonly accepted fact among experts. So is it unlikely that the Chinese arrived here before Europeans? Yes, but is it impossible? Probably not. Some experts accuse Russ Camp's theory about Chinese characters being present in Native American petroglyphs of not only being inaccurate, but also of being disrespectful to the artwork's original creators and the cultural legacy they left behind to modern Native Americans. But in all fairness, Russ Camp is not the only person who has suggested that Asians reached North America long before we think they did. Such theories have been circulating for centuries, in fact, although they all lack verifiable, credible evidence. Number 3. Cluster Bombs This image of a cluster bomb unit containing over 600 cluster bombs was taken in 2006 in Lebanon. I'm sure you can agree that it would be terrifying to stumble upon a scene like this while walking through a field. And for years now, cluster bombs have been at the center of various controversies around the world due to the danger they harbor to non-combatants. Since the Cold War ended, many states have removed cluster bombs from their arsenals for humanitarian reasons, as they pose a very serious danger to innocent civilians, even years later. Invented during the early 20th century to maximize a single weapon's ability to cause damage, and over a wider area than traditional munitions, cluster bombs contain many small explosives that are dispersed from a main unit while on their way to the ground. Cluster bombs have a tendency to release bomblets or submunitions that do not end up exploding on their way to the ground. For this reason, the undetonated pieces end up laying on the ground indefinitely, hidden by grass and brush and posing a constant risk to any nearby residents who could unintentionally set the bomblets off just by slightly jostling them. Cleaning up these unexploded weapons is both costly and dangerous, yet leaving them where they are equates to an ever-present threat of harm to innocent civilians, including children. 
To avoid repeating this shameful history, which many communities throughout the world are still dealing with the messes from today, some countries have signed the Convention on Cluster Munitions, an agreement not to produce or use cluster bombs. Russia, China, and the United States are among the top world powers who have refused to sign the agreement thus far. Number 2. Evidence of Atlantis Most experts regard the fabled city of Atlantis to be just that, more of a lesson, mythical in nature, and not a place that ever really existed. This conclusion came after much time was spent trying to figure out what place in the modern world, if any, could represent Atlantis. After tirelessly searching for the so-called lost city at the bottom of the ocean, eventually most mainstream researchers concluded that Atlantis was merely the product of Plato's imagination, rather than an unfortunate metropolis that was engulfed by the sea. But the idea that Atlantis might really have existed and that its ruins are still waiting to be discovered has some die-hard supporters, and a discovery in recent years appeared to lend some scientific credibility to their viewpoint. In early 2017, archaeologists announced that they had recovered an ancient shipwreck off the Sicilian coast containing ingots linked to the legendary Atlantis. The ingots, made from an unusual gold alloy, were among other items recovered from the 2,600-year-old shipwreck, including Corinthian war helmets, an anchor, amphorae fragments, and a container that was once used for holding valuable scrolls. Some experts theorize that the ingots were made of orichalcum, the mythical lost metal of Atlantis. But archaeologists generally remain unconvinced that the artifacts point toward the existence of Atlantis. For one, the timing of the shipwreck, the end of the 6th century BC, does not match up with Plato's claims that Atlantis disappeared hundreds or thousands of years earlier. However, the discovery does suggest that the long-fabled red-hued orichalcum may have actually been a real thing. What do you think? Did Atlantis once exist, or is it time for believers to give up on their dream of ever finding it? Let me know in the comments below. For more information, be sure to check out our video on what happened to Atlantis. Number 1. Rewriting Humankind's History A 2018 discovery flew completely in the face of everything experts understood, up until that point, about the migration of the earliest humans from Africa and into other parts of the world. That year, archaeologists discovered around 100 stone tools in a cave at the Shangchen archaeological site in central China, dating as far back as 2.1 million years ago. The inhabitants at the site lived there on and off for around 800,000 years, until around 1.2 million years ago. Their tools are unlike any others found outside Africa, especially given their age, which directly challenges long-held narratives about when our ancient relatives first left the continent, pushing back their migration date by a quarter million years. The tools at Shang Chen are roughly 300,000 years older than the next oldest known tools ever found outside Africa. These were from the 1.8 million-year-old Dimanisi site in Georgia, which contains the oldest known fossils of Homo erectus, our extinct hominid cousin. Archaeologists admitted that the discovery reflects how little the academic community truly knows about humanity's collective history, including that of our earliest predecessors. So does the discovery of 2.1 million-year-old stone tools outside Africa mean that everything we understand about our beginnings is a lie? No, not exactly, but it certainly reminds us that the human narrative is an ongoing project that we will likely have to rewrite parts of as we continue making discoveries like this. This discovery, among others, including 107,000-year-old Homo erectus bones found in Java, Indonesia, also reminds us that modern humans weren't the first hominids to leave Africa and that our ancestors also made the journey to other parts of the world. Other archaeological discoveries in recent years, including a 210,000-year-old skull fragment found in a Greek cave, also point towards our need to rewrite the Homo sapiens narrative, which until recently claimed that modern humans migrated out of Africa around 60,000 years ago. The skull discovery, among others, suggests that we left the continent much earlier than that, and that there were, perhaps, multiple migration waves of modern humans leaving Africa. Thanks for watching! Would you like to learn more about mysterious and unsettling discoveries that change history? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time!